back hard porch, and I went through the few steps up, and it was a terrible smell. So I went in, and I said, ooh, you know, I said, he must have cooked and um, left something on the stove. So I went in the kitchen, and I didn't see anything. So I went a few more of the step up to the bedroom, and I seen him laying to his side. So I said, I think son is dead. He has nothing on but a T-shirt, and his head is back on the bed and canted to one side, and there's blood coming out of his nostrils and some kind of foam. And she realizes he's dead, and she screams, Sonny's dead. What happens after this is kind of murky. I called my attorney and uh, told him that Sonny was dead. He said, how you know he's dead? I said, well, he's laying, I can see he's swolled up, you know? So he said, you're locked up, but don't say anything. I think Geraldine is under the impression that the uh, phone call was made to the authorities shortly thereafter, like 15 minutes. He said, call your doctor and call the police, and that's what it did, like in 15, 20 minutes. But in fact, a large amount of time passed, something closer to two or three hours before the authorities were called. He's a mystery to me, too. I don't know. I'm telling you, the police were right there in about five to ten minutes. Sonny Liston, the former heavyweight boxing champion, was found dead last night in his Las Vegas home by his wife. He was 38. He had been dead for at least a week. An autopsy failed to show the cause of death, and further studies will be made. Police said that they found small quantities of what appeared to be heroin and marijuana in the home. We came upstairs, uh, and on entering the bedroom, I, could, I observed the, uh, the body of a... Uh, black male adult, uh, obviously been uh, deceased some time, uh, laying on his back, uh, looking at the ceiling, um, and quite swollen and, and uh, really uh, in terrible shape. I was directed to the uh, kitchen area by the investigating officers, and in this area they had uh, located some narcotic paraphernalia, uh, a small baggie of grass, uh, a small balloon of heroin. So it appeared to us at that point that uh, he got a um, overdose of drugs, whether it was by shooting up too much in that a short time period or or whatever. There was far too many uh, too many hours passed between the time that Mrs. Liston uh, entered the house and found the body, and when the actual call was made to our department. Uh, time to remove things, to change things. Where was the surgical tubing that he would have probably used to wrap around his arm to expose a vein? Where was the spoon used for cooking? Had it been moved? None of this stuff was present. And of course, you know, the lack of things can be as suspicious as actual items of evidence there. It wasn't uncommon for family members uh, in these cases to go through and tidy up, so to speak, the crime scene or the scene uh, to save face, to save family embarrassment. At the autopsy, Dr. Clark pointed out uh, to uh, Mr. Carroll some uh, scars on the arms of Sonny Liston, which at that time Here's the end were interpreted as uh, needle marks. We spent at least all day uh, working with this. He screened out uh, the presence of many drugs and uh, found, um, well, he found heroin present. The cause of death uh, being an accidental overdose, that could very well be, but was it self-inflicted or was it administered by someone else? There's all kinds of speculation. Uh, the kindest uh, speculation is that um, Sonny had got into shooting up heroin, maybe a little joy popping or something like that, and um, had taken a little bit too much and his heart had given out on it. People say, well, he couldn't have done drugs. He was afraid of needles. Other people say, oh, no, he was a drug addict. He had a dentist. And the dentist was quoted in various columns that Sonny, you know, the big bad Sonny Liston was deathly afraid of, it, of needles. He didn't even like to get shot. That's, that was the only thing, you know. And so I says, I, I don't think that he would let someone get put something to go through his veins. One corner at the autopsy, 
said that he saw old needle tracks on Sonny's arm. If, in fact, he had old needle tracks in his arm, then that destroys the argument that Sonny could not have been a heroin addict because he was deathly afraid of needles. The other school of thought is that Sonny was given a hot shot, an intentional overdose of heroin to kill him. Why? Well, there are some people saying that he was getting too big for his britches. He was trying to muscle in on some of the underground uh, characters he was working for, getting too big for his britches, and they decided that this was the way to dispose of Sonny. Harold Conrad, his old friend from the fight days, says that he had gotten involved muscling in on somebody's loan sharking business and that he was murdered uh, over this dispute, over territory, loan sharking territory. Others say that he had had a dispute with a fight promoter out there named Ash Resnick and that Resnick uh, had a contract taken out on him and the contract was executed by a colleague. The story was that Sonny was going around Vegas shooting off his mouth claiming that Resnick had fixed either one or both of his fights with Ali. And because of this, Resnick had supposedly taken out a contract on Sonny, who was then killed by a hot shot, an overdose of heroin. In spite of the drugs found in Listen's body and the suspicious circumstances surrounding his death, the coroner still listed his death as resulting from natural causes. As a result, the police just dropped the case. There was no further investigation. The funeral procession went down the strip and people came out of the casinos to pay homage to Sonny Liston. The ironic thing about it was that Sonny, to the end, had a police escort, even down the strip. I thought that was the, the perfect touch. He had a police escort in St. Louis, he had a police escort in Philadelphia, he had a police escort in Denver, and he ended up with a police escort in Las Vegas. The tragedy of Liston as a man was that I don't think he was ever understood by the public that he was dealing with. And he never knew how to make that public understand him. I know all the bad things that Sonny did, or at least enough of them, you know. And I can't make excuses for a lot of the stuff that he did. But I think Sonny Liston had so many light years to come. Many times I was around with Sonny Liston, and he, uh, see, you like me, don't you? Like a little kid would, you know. This is sure I like you. You know, I like you too. I think because of his terrible background growing up, he was looking for somebody who didn't criticize him and who didn't want to hit him with a club or a stick. Sonny brought a lot of this stuff on himself. There's no question about it. There is, nonetheless, an undercurrent of sadness about Sonny Liston, and I feel it for him, because he was born without a chance. On some level of his life, he was a stranger to everybody who knew him, in a way, because he was one guy to one person and one guy to another. Nobody knows exactly when he was born, and very appropriately, nobody knows exactly the day he died. Here's a man who didn't know himself, and uh, I don't know if anybody else really knew the whole Sonny Liston either.